Ahoy everyone and welcome to the Magic Kingdom. Today we are embarking on a brief history of the Pirates of the Caribbean right here in Adventureland. Come along and join me. Pirates stole the hearts of many an adventurer when it opened its doors in 1973, just a few years after its Disneyland counterpart. One of the first details you'll notice upon entering Caribbean Plaza is the clock tower, Torre del Cielo, which sets the tone for the immersive theming we have come to love and expect from Disney. The attraction is housed in a Spanish fort called Castillo del Morro, or Castle of the Hill. Different adaptations of the fort were used in other Disney parks. Here at Walt Disney World, Castillo del Moro was modeled after a 16th century fortress in Puerto Rico. The ride queue is one of my personal favorites in Magic Kingdom. As soon as you enter the building, you are transported back in time to an underground armory. You'll find a stockpile of weapons and provisions. What do you think these barrels are full of? We can only speculate as we pass through the queue. I have long dreamed of sneaking over and having a run behind all these barrels. <laughs> How about you? Let me know in the comments below. There are over 120 audio animatronics on this bootlegging voyage, featuring pirates, villagers, and animals alike. You might even recognize some of their voices. The voice of Paul Fries emanates through the canal as he warns us, dead men tell no tales. He voiced several of the pirates and early versions of the auctioneer too. <laughs> If that voice sounds familiar, you might have heard it in the Haunted Mansion. Paul Freeze is the infamous ghost host. I am your host, your ghost host. <laughs> Next up, we have what I like to call the Bottomless Pirates. In the canon scene where Captain Barbosa is standing aboard his ship, there are a group of pirate animatronics that rise and fall from our view while firing off cannons. But from the other side, it seems they are somewhat lacking downstairs. These bottomless buccaneers look completely different from the inside of the ship. Nestled between Adventureland and Frontierland, you'll find a tiny shack where you can enlist for a pirate's adventure, Treasures of the Seven Seas. While the experience is temporarily unavailable, you would normally start this interactive scavenger hunt by completing missions throughout Adventureland. You join Captain Jack Sparrow in his search for hidden treasures. If you completed a minimum of two missions, you could score a free Fast Pass for Pirates of the Caribbean. I'm hopeful that Disney will bring this experience back soon as it goes hand in hand with the ride theme. Also, who wouldn't love a free Fast Pass, am I right? This legendary tune is one we won't soon forget, and we owe it all to Exitensio, who captured the very dark essence of looting thieves and transformed it into a merry song. With a little help from George Bruns, who wrote the music, this anthem quickly became an earworm for the ages. Exitensio's lyrical description of a pirate's life, pillaging, plundering, and everything in between, gave us a taste of historical reality. These pirates were really bad eggs, so George Bruns created a family-friendly balance with his light-hearted melodies, hence the ride soundtrack we know and love today. 
This attraction is beloved for so many reasons. When you have a memorable soundtrack and combine it with scenes from a swashbuckling adventure, this is the recipe for a timeless classic. Hello, happy haunts. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked what you saw here today, I hope you'll consider hitting that like button, leaving a comment down below. By the way, if you're new here, my name is Nora, and we do stuff like this all the time in the theme parks. As always, have a fantastic day, and cheers.